What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another home theater package to check out. These are the Rendell Sound 1961s. This is the center channel, which is, goes for 500 bucks. We have the surrounds. These are also $700. We also have the Atmos toppers, which are these guys here. These ones are also $700. These are the kinds that kind of angle up. And then we also have the bookshelves. These are the small bookshelves. These are, I believe, $600. Uh, no, also $700. <laughs> Seems like everything's 700 bucks. And then we have the larger versions of the bookshelves, which are the monitors, which are $900. So this first one is the center channel. It's got a little weight to it. It is smaller than I was expecting. Definitely a little guy. But check out that finish though. This is more of a matte finish. This is matte black. So there's no sheen to this, which is really nice. So if you're using it in the home theater, it will more or less absorb the light rather than reflect it back. On the back, these are not bi-wireable like the other ones were, like the larger ones. But these are also wall-mountable. They got little keyhole slots here and the little mounting slots here if they if you wanted to get the wall mounting brackets. Five and a half inch woofers, woofer mid-range drivers, mid-range drivers, and one inch soft dome tweeter. Inside the waveguide, so this should give you pretty wide dispersion. And this is around the edge here is a kind of a soft rubber. Oh, frequency response for the center channel, 75 Hertz. They don't dig extremely low, but good enough though. Still a nice little cloth bag in here. Keep it from getting scratched up in shipment. And these are these are little babies as well. Look at that. It's cute. Five and a half inch mid-range woofer and one inch soft dome tweeter in the waveguide. It's got the same rubbery outside ring. And not by wireable, but you can wall mount it. And same rhodium plated binding posts. It's got the little notch there, which I think is a nice touch. So if you're laying it flat against your wall, the speaker cable can go right through that notch. So you don't have it bumped out of the wall at all. And of course you get the keyhole slot there. And then with the grill attached, very nice. Look at that nice clean look, same matte finish, matte black. It's like my favorite finish for a speaker for a home theater at least. So that's nice. Next up are going to be the height channels or the Atmos toppers. All right, so you can see it's got the angle profile. So if you want to drop it on top of your speaker, it's supposed to direct sound upwards. Is that true? Hold on, let me see. Can you put that on top? I guess so. I, I would have thought there'd be more of an angle to shoot it upwards, like if it was laying down. Yeah, it looks like it's looking straight up. Yeah, very slight angle. Mm -hmm. Strange, I'm gonna have to try it out and see what it sounds like. Bouncy house. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like it would bounce that much though if you look at it. But we'll see. And you would think that the, maybe the tweeter would be up at the high point, shooting upwards. I could be wrong on that. But same thing, five and a half inch driver, one inch soft dome tweeter in the waveguide. Around back, this is a nice touch that I have not seen another speaker have is this rubbery soft touch back. So if you want to sit it on top of the speaker, your left and rights, this will not scratch it. So that's like a rubber pad. Very sweet. And then keyhole slot, mounting points, and your binding posts. So that's a nice touch. I like that. Same matte black finish. This also goes down to uh, 75 hertz, just like the surrounds and the center channel. All right, so let's move on over to the bookshelf models. These ones are also 700 bucks. Nice cloth bag. Looks like the other speakers, just, you know, just a regular square factor, square form factor. Same driver, same tweeter, same mid-range, same uh, waveguide. Um, same back as the other guys. Binding posts, little notch for the wire. This also goes down to, I think, uh, 75 hertz so everything so far has been going out of 75 hertz so you probably want to cross it down at least maybe 80 hertz or so and all right so these ones are 900 dollars and 
Yeah, so these look like uh, bigger versions of the bookshelves. So they're actually the same size, just uh, with the additional woofer on the top there, but same, same width and depth and everything. All right, so this is the, the Atmos speaker. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to uh, go up there. I'm not sure. It, that would more like for... Uh, yeah, probably for the towers. bigger ones. Yeah, for the towers. I don't think <laughs> that would be designed for that. I would have to actually mount this on my ceiling. I didn't realize how big those were. Yeah, those are pretty deep. So that's it. That's the collection. Minus the towers. Like we, we didn't have any room for towers. So we got the 1961 Heights. The surrounds, which are which are a dipole. Actually, I thought you could use these as dipole or monopole or tripole, but it looks like you could only use it as dipole because you don't have the extra binding post to disconnect or connect the side drivers. So it looks like it's only for dipole usage only. And then we got the bookshelves, the small guys, and then the bigger ones which are the monitors. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these set up in the theater and we'll play a few demos. And then afterwards, we'll give you some thoughts and impressions on how these guys sound and if I think that they are worth the asking price, which, you know, from the build quality and everything, really stout packaging. These are like little, little bricks and super high quality build. So let's go ahead and get these things set up. For setup, the speakers are going to be hooked up to a Trinol Valti 232 and they're going to be powered by a pair of Macintosh amps. For source material, I'll be using a Zipidi media player. They're going to be placed in my dedicated theater and I'm also going to set these up without using any room correction, just the levels and the distances are going to be set. And for the majority of testing, I'm not going to pair these with any subwoofers, just so we can hear how dynamic they are by themselves. As for the 1961 heights, since they are too big to be placed on top of the bookshelves, I'm not going to temporarily mount these on my ceiling, but I will test these in my living room system. First movie I threw in was Kong Skull Island on 4K Blu-ray. This is an Atmos extravaganza that's aggressive from every channel. You'll hear chopper blades whirling in a circular motion through the lower channels with machine guns blasting away in the side surrounds. And let's not forget the massive amounts of bass. Of course, the first thing you're going to notice is that these lack any type of low-end extension. Given the small size though, it's really no surprise. But that's not what we're listening for. What's really amazing is the soundstage that these little guys can throw out. Just like their bigger brothers, the 1723s, the tweeters are set within a large waveguide, which covers a really large area. The front stage is very immense and makes it sound like the speakers are a lot bigger than what they are. When effects move towards the sides and the back of the room, things go up another notch. Because the surround channels have drivers not only in the front, but also on the sides of the enclosure, surround effects shoot towards you, but also to the sides. This gives the speakers a much larger presence than what the waveguide does on its own. During the quieter scenes, you'll hear insects and jungle noises that'll make you feel like you're sitting outside with the characters. What the hell is this? There's excellent detail from every speaker, and the tweeters produced every little nuanced sound effect. Again, since these are small speakers, things like Kong growling or him stomping on the ground will be non-existent. So these must be paired with a subwoofer to get the full experience. Next movie I threw in was Gravity on Blu-ray. This is a great movie to see how well your speakers match tonally. During the beginning, you'll hear Clooney and Sandra's voice move in different directions, and they should sound exactly the same when they pan through each speaker. Pressure grounded at you, Houston. Uh, have I joined the fun? Certainly. How are you feeling? Uh, like a chihuahua that's being tumble dried. Now, it's been a rough week. It makes you feel any better. I coughed up everything but my kidneys on my first ride. 
One thing I've noticed when the dialogue moves from front channels to surrounds is the voices do change characters slightly since the side drivers make things seem bigger. So when voices move from left speaker to left surround, it goes from being very pinpoint direct to a more it's coming from the left surround area. It's spread larger and not so beamy sounding. As mentioned before, it does create for a larger surround atmosphere. Now unlike the larger 1723 surround speakers, you can't disconnect the side drivers and use these as only direct radiators. If you want to go more direct, you can use the 1961 monitors all around. This would give you perfect camera matching in every location. Me personally, I'd go that route since I like that direct sound coming at me. But it's a subjective thing and you may prefer the sound of the triaxial design. Next I tested how well the height channels worked for bouncing sound off the ceiling. I placed these on top of a pair of Focal Super 1s and I used the Yamaha RX V6A receiver. Keep in mind, you will need a flat ceiling for this effect to work properly. I played the Atmos helicopter demo to see if I could hear the chopper above my head. This doesn't sound as good as having actual speakers mounted above you, but I did get a little taste of that height channel surround. It sounded like I was hearing sound coming from the top middle of the room. The Focal speakers I was using has an upward slope so it was directing sound at a greater angle shooting it towards the center of my living room. If the tops of your speakers are flat then what you'd hear might be very different than mine. For some small form factor speakers, these throw out an amazingly huge detailed sound stage. The setup I have on hand is a top performer for a seamless surround experience. I do think however, if you were going to use their tower speakers up front, you may find that the center channel to be a weak point since it's so small. Going with the monitors was a perfect blend. I would have liked the option to run the surrounds as direct radiators, like their larger speakers, but I suppose you could just use the monitors all around, or you could even use the height speakers as surround, since they have that convenient angle. I did find using the height speakers for reflective duty to be hit and miss, but if you can't mount speakers on your ceiling, then this is a simple easy solution and the drivers are even the same as the rest of the other speakers, so they didn't skimp on the high channels or really on any channel. These are premium built speakers that throw out a premium sound. If you're tight for space but want a big home theater experience, I think you'll find the 1961s are going to be a tough system to beat. Just keep in mind, you will need a subwoofer. So those are my thoughts on the Arendelle Sound 1961 home theater speakers. Have you guys heard them and what's your take on the sound quality? And if you haven't heard them, Arendelle Sound does offer a 60 day buy and try period. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can find us on social media and if you want to support the channel, then stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you guys again in the next video.